Did you know that you can easily build your own router, tab bar, navigation bar in Capacitor apps with just vanilla JavaScript? Let me show you how. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy and in this video I will quickly show you how you can build a Capacitor native application for iOS and Android with your own router. So you don't need Angular, you don't need React or Vue or anything at all. We're gonna use a handy little package called Navigo to first of all implement different routes in our application. Then we're gonna set up a tab bar at the bottom using Tailwind styling and also include a fancy navigation bar at the top which can conditionally render a back button and the title of a page so we have our own styling for a very traditional app setup. In the end we will also add deep links to our application so we can directly jump into our application with a link. So this is really really cool and you definitely want to see this. So if you want to grab the code, link below the video to the tutorial and also all the source code on GitHub so you can follow along. And now without further ado, let's build our Capacitor app with vanilla JavaScript routing. All right, so let's get into our app. I already prepared a few things which you can also find uh, all linked below this video in the written version and of course also in the code on GitHub. So I initialized a new Capacitor app and I installed all the dependencies and then I also set up Tailwind just like we did in the previous tutorial for Capacitor and vanilla JavaScript and finally installed Navigo. But we're gonna come to that in a second. For now I'm just gonna show you that this is how far I got. So I got a little UI here in my application but there's actually not too much happening. Yes, the URL changes but there's really nothing going on in the app. And our goal is now to build a tab bar based on vanilla JavaScript. And for that you can either use your own router implementation and catch the window change events and the URLs and all that stuff but I actually found the Navigo library to be one of the easiest routers for JavaScript uh, or vanilla JavaScript project. So as I said let's run npm install Navigo in our project and then we can continue. So just to give you a quick idea of how this project is structured. We got our index.html for our capacitor file which does all the basic stuff. I do wrap everything inside uh, some Tailwind stuff. I do have a little fix at the top which is only relevant for native devices so once you deploy to iOS this will fix some area at the top. We do have a navigation bar area with a custom web component. You already see this blue thing. It's not really working yet, so that's some code we also need to write. Then we would have the actual content. So if I would put something in here, uh, it should appear here, right? This is our main content area where our content will be rendered. So think about that again. And then we have the tab bar at the bottom with three tabs. We got home, posts, and settings. Actually, I think we just need tab. We don't even need tab button. I'm not completely sure, but let's give this a try. And you already see that those have the uh, additional property here, data navigo. And this is important because we will now set up the router and based on those uh, elements on our links, the router knows how to navigate and how to handle stuff. So. To import our router, we can now create a new router.js, which I already did, and we're gonna replace this with some basic setup. So most importantly, we set up a new router using new Navigo, and then you define the routes in your application. So for example, we have the route slash, we have posts, and we have settings. And in the end, we call resolve to initialize our router. Now, there's also one additional function we're gonna talk about in a second, but the general idea is that we can react to changes of the URL. And at that point, in our case, we use the render function here that I created, which simply queries our content element and then sets the inner HTML to some content. So for example, it would set it to home. Uh, on the post page, it would create this little list. And on the settings page, it would show settings. So if I hit save, we see that I now got a home page. Uh, I can go to posts and we show this. And if I go to settings, we have this. So we have kind of almost a functional tab bar with the minimum amount of code. Now, this is pretty cool. If you have bigger projects with many more pages, you might want to look into something like handlebars. Uh, so you can actually also load your templates uh, from other pages and don't just have a function to render the HTML. That might be a bit too much in the end. But otherwise, this is a great way to handle routing. You just define your routes with a little match statement and then you can do whatever you want in here. So let's take this a step further and make it look even better. Um, so in my style, I already got my fix for my app navbar at the top. I got the Tailwind imports. 
Um, I got some basic color defined based on the Tailwind color, so that is also used in our web component, which we'll come back to in a second. And we have the tab bar with a little border and the tab as well. Um, so those look okay. I think what we need as well is a bit more styling for the active tab. So if we want to have an active tab, this will now get a blue border. Again, it doesn't really make sense to type all of this in the video. Just doing this file alone with Tailwind would probably take us like 10 to 15 minutes and wouldn't make the video any more interesting. So go check this out on GitHub. Um, I also added some code for the page. So on the posts page, I want to structure this a bit better. Give this a little flex layout and make the post just look better. So now we got this uh, UI for the posts page. And I can actually go, no, I, we haven't set up that route. So uh, let's now implement how we can finish our tab bar by getting or setting the active element. And for this, we're going to add a new function to our router, which will simply check. Uh, it will grab our tab, so every tab. And for all the tabs, it will check if this is the active index currently, then it will add tab active and otherwise, uh, actually we don't really need tab button, I think. I think we just need tab active or not. And now the only thing we need to do is call this function in our uh, matching of the router. So if I go to the home page, uh, I would simply say update tab bar zero. Uh, on post, I would say one. On settings, I would say two. And now let's hit save and we see it appears here. If I click here, it updates this using our little snippet and automatically our uh, active route is marked. This is how easily you can create a tab bar with vanilla JavaScript and really just the basics in Capacitor. You don't really need a framework at all. Uh, this is all you need and you could build a powerful app based on this setup, really, that's all. Um, but I wanted to also show you something additionally because only the tab bar, yeah, it's cool, um, but we also wanna have the navigation bar and I also wanna go to my details pages. So we really wanna cover the different aspects of routing and in the end, I'm gonna have something special for you as well. So definitely wait for that. So let's add another one. Exactly, and Copilot already tells me what I wanna do. So I wanna listen for posts and then the wildcard ID, which means on those pages, I'm able to navigate to a specific uh, post. So this will actually update the tab bar to use uh, one as active. Then we can grab our match ID. So the ID from here is in the match.data. And with that in place, uh, we can render a simple page. So let's just render uh, post details something. So now I can go here, post details two, post details one, post details three, and you can just check out the URL. I could also go, of course, to 42, and that would be import details 42. And that is how we can add dynamic routing to our application. It's really that easy. Now, uh, let me do one more change to this file, and that is now regarding our navigation bar. So if you have a navigation bar, this needs to interact now with the general routing of your application. So I'm gonna replace this because now we're gonna include something else. I'm gonna dispatch an event. I'm gonna just do a new custom event when I will rechange the page. So this will emit something like page home, tab zero, page post, tab one, or in the case of our uh, details page here, it will actually emit page something, uh, tab one and back true. Now. With all that information, we can build a powerful navbar. Now, we've already seen that I included a custom navbar component in here. Go check out the first video where I did the basic uh, capacitor application if you want to see more about how we can use those custom web elements. This is currently the setup for our navigation bar. Uh, it spans the view, it has a blue background, it has some flex layout, and most importantly, it has a, a back button and it has a nav title. And now we can access all of this in the connected callback and in the connected callback, listen for all the changes um, of our application. So next to this, we're gonna add something like this. So we're gonna listen to all the body events or we're grabbing the body and then we add an event listener to page changed. Through that data, we know we get the page so we can simply update our title. It's not that hard. Additionally, we can also check if the detail back is set. So if this is set, we can access our shadow root element back button and either show the back button or hide it. And finally, 
we can grab the back button and add an event listener for the click event and simply go back in the history to implement a simple click to go back functionality. Now let's check this out. Home, settings, posts, all updated here in our event listener. Additionally, if I now go to the details page, we see this little button up here pops up and I can easily go back to my previous page, which means we have basically implemented a tab bar and a list detail navigation with just vanilla JavaScript in our capacitor application in like, what is this, like 10 minutes? Yeah, 11 minutes, 12 minutes. This is really fast and we didn't use Angular, React, Vue or anything at all. And this is the beauty of Capacitor and why you can actually really use it without anything else to build powerful apps. Now, this is of course just a web application and if you want to make this a native application, you would have to run some code. So let's go back to my command sh file. So if you want to now add native platforms, you would go ahead and install Capacitor Android and Capacitor iOS. You would run a build from your project and then add the native platforms. Now, this is what I already did. And we want to do one more thing. So on a native application, you sometimes directly want to link somebody to this page. And this is actually very easily possible. This is the topic of deep links. Now, there's something more as universal links which work through URLs, but we can get like the light version of deep links by using a URL scheme, which basically means our app can be opened with like, we have something like vanilla JS slash slash post slash one. And if you have any URL, this would directly open your application and hopefully the right page. Now, the only thing we need for this is the Capacitor app package. So actually we need to install, oh, we did, no, we did this not yet. Uh, Capacitor app, that will be the package we need to install. And once we got that, let's go to our nav bar. Uh, no, to the router, because there's currently our functional uh, file. We can add a simple snippet that looks like this. We import the plugin from Capacitor and we add a listener to the app URL open event. This is triggered when our application, our native application, is opened directly with a specific event. Um, we will then split the URL and try to use Capacitor Vanilla something. And if that path array is bigger than one, we're gonna grab the URL, so basically everything that follows here, which could be something like slash post slash one. And then we call the router that we already have and navigate to that page. It's really as easy as that. Now, if you want to make this work with your application, uh, what you're going to do is you need to go into the native settings. So previously we used all the native stuff in our application and everything was um, all the web stuff basically, and everything was cool. However, the problem now is that we uh, need to make changes to the native files, especially two files. So the first one is the plist on iOS. This is a strange file configuration for iOS and you're gonna have to add this part here to define a custom URL scheme. This defines a bundle URL scheme I call my Capacitor Vanilla. It's actually not too complicated. It's really the only thing you need to add and then you can open your app with something like Capacitor Vanilla slash slash something. Same is true for Android. So for Android we actually need to, oh we, we should, let's say we should touch two files. Uh, this is the source main Android manifest. So in the Android manifest, there's a new, no, that's not the new one. <laughs> this is the new one. Uh, one additional intent filter here, uh, which uses the string custom URL scheme. And if you know a bit about Android, you also know that this means we need to define our string somewhere, which is under res values strings. And here it is. No, that's not the one. <laughs> um, this is the one actually it should be. Uh, or was it that name, custom URL scheme? Yeah. So we would have something like Capacitor Vanilla in here, and then we would have our custom URL scheme set up for Android as well. And to showcase what this now does on the device, let me show you this with a real app. So here's the app on my iOS device. I deployed it through Xcode and I added Capacitor Vanilla slash post slash 1337, and let's click it. Uh, of course, that's not clicking it. There we go. And it immediately takes me right into this page of the application. I mean, we haven't set up any logic to validate that this page exists or that the URL has the right scheme, but we are 
jumped right into our application after just developing it on uh, the web here. And we see this is a beautiful application. I mean, I have a back arrow, I have a nice tab bar at the bottom. Yeah, we probably could stop that flicker, but that should be easily done uh, with Tailwind CSS. We have that list and the whole logic just works. And this just took us barely 15 minutes. So you see, you can build powerful native application with Capacitor with just vanilla JavaScript and probably some styling from Tailwind. All right, and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of like the second video. In the first one, we did a full Capacitor application with styling, with image capturing and plugins. And this one was focused on navigation and the layouts concept that, as we've seen, we can easily implement with just Capacitor, Vanilla JavaScript and Tailwind. So if you enjoyed it, check out the written tutorial link below on the Ionic blog or the code on GitHub. And of course, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Ionic, Capacitor and React Native videos coming in the future. I'll hopefully catch you in the next one. And until then, of course, happy coding, Simon.